the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come, you whom my Father has blessed. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Alleluia. Well, welcome to a service of spiritual communion on this the Wednesday in the octave of Easter. I uh, hope that these words and prayers that we say together will be a comfort and guidance for you at this time. Before we enter, hear the word of God and say our prayers together, let us now have a moment of quiet where we bring before God the sins that we have committed by the things that we have done and the things that we ought to have done. Let us say together the words that ask for God's forgiveness. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance. We have sinned in weakness. We have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us. For our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, on this solemn feast you give us the joy of recalling the rising of Christ to new life. May the joy of our annual celebration bring us to the joy of eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. This reading uh, this afternoon comes from the Book of Acts. Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at that gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple. Seeing Peter and John go about to, about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, with John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention upon them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognised him as the one who sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The earth 
is full of the goodness of the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant which he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Praise and glory to God. That very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, what is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And now our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they, con they constrained him, saying, Stay with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them and said, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Lord. Fantastic passage. 
this is one of the most beautiful of all the resurrection narratives. I think it's one that all of us uh, who Christ has come to us in some way can recognize. There's two things going on here. We've got the sacrament and the word. We've got how their hearts, the exact words is used, is wonderful. Did, our, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? Christ interpreting the scriptures for these men, their hearts burning as they hear them. They know something else is going on. There's something in what this man, who they don't know as Christ, is saying to them. I have found over these last few weeks with not being able to have communion, that the word of God has uh, somehow become deeper within me. Uh, my understanding of it has become so much wider and it's so much more of a spiritual experience reading it because of not being able to have communion, maybe. Maybe it's just isolation business. But the word of God is, our, is the thing that we all hold together. This is the thing we can share at this time. It is wonderful to hear, like at the vigil, the the passages from the book of Exodus and Genesis and the prophet Isaiah, how amazing those words are. The story that we hear of them, the story particularly of Exodus, is an incredible story of how God has worked with his people. It rings true for us today as it did for these men. Jesus interpreting the Old Testament so they could make sense of who he was. But it is this other part, the sacramental part of this passage, that is harder for us to hear. While he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognised him. These men had obviously shared the last supper with Christ in that upper room, the night that we uh, remember on Monday Thursday and indeed every Sunday. We are not able to do this at the moment. Uh, we are not able to have communion because it doesn't work online. So to hear that these people, uh, these two men, eyes were opened through knowing uh, Jesus' actions and words in the sacrament. This is how they truly recognised him. And that's something that we are not able to partake in at the moment is a little bit painful. It is my hope that people who are hearing uh, the scriptures at this time Particularly, this one will actually want to learn more about communion and the sacraments. For us at St. Michael's, being such a sacramental church and communion being something we share every day, this lockdown is uh, very difficult. And to hear this passage, to know that this is how those first disciples recognised him was through the sacramental action, uh, is somewhat painful. We need to remember that we will not be in level four lockdown forever. Uh, within a week or so, it'll change to level three and two, and we will be able to have communion again. And we will recognize Christ in that way that we have, the, the Christ that has got us through all of these things. That will happen. And we will be together again in that way, Christ's presence with us uh, so true and so clear. But for now, our understanding of Christ will be through the scriptures, our hearts burning as we hear them. Let the Old Testament at this time be some sort of uh, something that can ground us in an understanding of God. Let the story that we hear from the Acts of the Apostles give us courage and inspiration as we look at how we might minister in this new world. And let the gospel that we hear every day the words of Christ and the actions of Christ give us comfort and guidance for every day that we are in. Let us pray. Let us pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by the coronavirus, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for those who are guiding our nation at this time, our Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and all the government, those who are shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. We especially pray for some of our parishioners who are struggling at this time, most particularly today, our friend and brother Bruce. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you. Uh, we remember those who have gone before us, those who we've loved and those who we've learned from, those who are now held within God's eternal and loving care. For those whose anniversaries fall on this day. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. May life perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your saints, those who have been the light of Christ throughout all generations. That's particularly our patron, Michael the Archangel, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom we greet as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, the peace of Christ be always with you. E Tifana, we are the body of Christ. By one spirit we were baptised into one body. Keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. We are bound by the love of Christ. So while we are not able to uh, have communion at this time, we are able to pray together in a way that recognises our yearning to be united with Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. In union, O oh dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. O oh, let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. Well, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The disciples recognised the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord, may this celebration of our redemption help us in this life and lead us to eternal happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here, uh, St. Michael and all angels in Christchurch, New Zealand, for this service of spiritual, com spiritual communion. I hope and pray that these words that we have said together, uh, the scripture that we have heard and the prayers that we have said have given you some help and guidance and comfort at this time. I hope you can join us again at four o'clock today for evening prayer and these same services will run again tomorrow. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.